All right. Hello, YouTube. Thank you for tuning in, as always, to Auto Transport for Dummies, where we talk about all the things you dummies want to know out there. So in this clip, we're actually just going through one of the most misunderstood topics that just, you know, we've covered it plenty, but people continue to struggle with it. And that is, that is of course, the initial estimates, final rates, guarantees. When do I know what this will actually cost me to move my vehicle across the country? When will I know the final rate to transport my car? Are these estimates I find online from various you know, companies, are these actual hard numbers? What are these? And of course, yeah. You're going online, you get a few quotes from this company X, company Y, company B, hopefully airride.com. And you're looking through, you're looking at reviews, you're deciding what to do, but you're not sure about the pricing. When are you gonna find out what the final pricing is, right? Everyone wants to know, they go into Walmart to buy a TV, what's the price? Okay, we understand that concept, but it just doesn't really work that way with this industry because you're engaging in a live supply and demand market, okay? It's very much like the price of oil or something that moves up and down ever so slightly on every single route in the country. Um, and every and when you come to AirRide or you go to another website, I can't speak for other companies, but what they're gonna do to price your load out and give you the best possible estimate, they're gonna look at the current slate of loads on whatever route you're trying to move. They, and by, by the way they do that is through the load board. So there's different load boards uh, that they're gonna look at and they're gonna look at the top 20, 30% of loads moving. So for instance, if you're trying to move something from Dallas, Texas to Seattle, Washington, anybody that knows how to quote something, they're gonna be looking at the loads coming out of Dallas, going to Seattle, and they're gonna look at those top loads, like the top 20, 30 loads. And somewhere in there, that's pretty much what you can expect to pay because their trucks are not gonna be going beyond that first page to pick up orders, okay? Think about it like Google, okay? When you search for, you know, auto transport near me, or you search for uh, food near me or whatever, you're probably looking at that first page of results from Google, right? You're not on the seventh page looking at results. So that's really very similar to how load boards work. The top paying loads are gonna be at the top. That's what we're looking at. So we can look at that and say, okay, this is what's available now for trucks to move. So it's gonna have to be in this area. So like if the example I just provided, Dallas to Seattle, let's just say the top 20% are paying between like 850 to 850 to 1100. Well, it's probably gonna be somewhere around 1000 to move that unit, okay? Um, that's just how it is. So if we tried to move that vehicle at 750 or even 800, it's probably gonna be pretty tough sledding trying to get a carrier interested. Why? Because there's other freight paying more money available for those trucks to pick up right now. So if you're not trying to pay what the current market rate is on that route, it's just not going to move. Everything you see on the front end when you're going and getting those initial quotes from these different various companies, these are 100% of the time going to be close approximations or estimates. And they're estimating it based on what the previous most recent loads on the similar route of similar vehicles took to get moved at market. And when I say at market, I mean, what did they actually take direct pay rate to the truck to get moved? Not what they're charging along with that cost, meaning the broker side of the payment. They're looking at what did that actually take to get it moved directly from a truck. So if it took like around 900 or 1,000, or let's say the last five loads took somewhere between 800 and 1,000, well, a pretty accurate quote's probably gonna be around 900, okay? Now, a lot of people are probably like, well, how come we can't guarantee this on the front end? Why isn't it possible to do that? Well, that's very simple to answer, and that is because when you're first getting quotes, there's nothing locked in, okay? It still takes a carrier to get a sign of the order to agree to an exact particular price to get the load officially dispatched out and have the contract officially locked in. Now, there's various factors that can either sort of inflate that price or deflate that price. Some of those factors are gonna be how popular is the route? Is the route a very common route, like New York to LA, Dallas to Miami, 
Or is it something like Jackson, Mississippi to Minot, North Dakota, or some other route going to a very remote location? If it's, go, if it's a popular route, it's most likely gonna move quicker and closer to market rates or maybe even beneath it because there's so much traffic and demand for loads on that lane. If it's not a popular lane, it's probably gonna inflate the price a little bit. Other factors that are totally unpredictable and always are changing slightly are just pure market dynamics. What I mean by that is the supply of trucks in an area actually looking for freight, actually looking for loads versus the sheer number of loads, meaning vehicles, trying to be moved out of an area. So if you've got a huge just glut of demand of people trying to say move out of an area, let's just say there was like a forest fire, like some massive fire or something in California, and a ton of people were trying to get out of LA, well, that's gonna skyrocket the demand out of LA. Prices are gonna drastically increase uh, just temporarily, of course. And if you're trying to move it in the middle of that high demand peak period, you're gonna end up paying more money. Um, and this is always something that's impossible to predict, but we can predict it to a certain extent depending on the route because some routes just simply have more trucks constantly moving on them versus other ones like we mentioned in the previous point. But it still is nonetheless an unknown science in every, in every single booking. So, you know, it's, it's always shifting around between like 100 to 250 bucks on this particular factor. Just pure supply and demand of trucks versus vehicles trying to be moved. Yet another factor is going to be the type of vehicle, what kind of vehicle is it? Is it inoperable? Is it operable? Is it at a dealer? Is it a private to private move? Is it at an auction? A lot of a lot of trucks don't like Copart. They don't want to deal with the hassle of Copart. A lot of trucks don't like older vehicles like a 66 Impala versus 2020 Honda Civic. I mean, if both units are in the same location paying the same rate, we're going to have nine calls on the Honda and probably zero on the Impala. That's just the reality. They know it's easier to haul the Honda, it's lighter weight, easier to maneuver, less chance of an incident. They're just all gonna want the Honda, so you're gonna have to overpay for that older vehicle. The time of year. If you're talking about moving something north from like Florida uh, in the summer, that's gonna take more to take it north because you got the snowbirds headed back north from their winter move, their winter solace in uh, Florida. Now they're trying to head north, a lot more demand, you're gonna pay more money. Northern routes, more expensive in the winter. Why? Because trucks don't want to move things in the north. It's more risky, more dangerous. Ice, snow, sleet, rain, hail, whatever. They don't want to take the chance, so that makes the southern routes cheaper, makes the northern routes more expensive to move freight. Finally, and surely not the most uh, insignificant factor is going to be your date requirements, okay? A lot of people have these crazy date requirements. They want to move out of, uh, you know, Sacramento, on day X, one day, 3 p.m. to 5, and they want it in Dallas on an exact day. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're always going to inflate the price by putting bigger demands on the date requirements, okay? In any given scenario, okay, no matter what transport you're trying to do, this is always true. The reasoning is simple. It goes back to the first few factors we mentioned before. If you're trying to move a vehicle from any point to any point, there's going to be various trucks always coming and going, but we can't predict what days they're going to be coming and going on the front end of the estimate. So we might end up having options a day before. So you want to move it on a Wednesday? Maybe we have an option for Monday, but we don't have, or a Thursday, but we don't have an option for Wednesday. So you're making the transport more costly and more difficult by putting stringent date demands on the order. And a lot of people are like, well, why can't we just have it picked up Thursday? Again, you're competing with your neighbors. So if you only have one day to pick up your vehicle that works for you, but there's loads sitting all around your, your vehicle that also need to move, and they're more flexible, well then those cars get picked up while yours does not. So you're just stacking the deck by putting a very stringent date, uh, date request on the order, which always will lead to an inflated price typically. Ah, to sum everything up I just mentioned so that you guys get it and it's crystal clear, Okay, you're booking an order, you're looking for quotes. Remember, front end of it, these are just close approximations. They are not hard guarantees. Anybody telling you the hard guarantees is just lying to your face. It, it, there is no possibility for it to be guaranteed until you have it assigned to a carrier 
later in the process. You have to get it on central, you have to do some work for that to happen. So that's never gonna be the case when you're first getting quotes. Those quotes, if the company is in any way competent, should typically be within zero to 150 bucks of whatever the initial estimate was. Generally, a company should be able to estimate it within $150 or so. Um, and that's what we do at AirRide. And if we're off by more than 150, we're happy to just cancel and refund the order. But we try to maintain transparency throughout the process. Like, hey, this, this one is like going to, you know, uh, Whitefish, Montana. I mean, I might take more money than, than we quoted. I mean, that's just the reality of trying to ship something there. Secondly, that quote you're getting on the front end, that has to translate to where the market actually is. So if you get a quote from someone and it's just way crazy, it doesn't look like any of your other quotes, it probably is crazy. Okay, you're not gonna move a vehicle from like LA to Miami for $600. So it, it doesn't matter and no one cares what someone quoted you. Again, these are not locked in numbers. These numbers have to be accurate against the current market that I just explained. If they're not, it's not gonna move at that rate. So keep that in mind. After that, after you decide you wanna go with a certain company based on the estimate, you understand it's a close approximation, not a hard rate, that company should start working on that order, get it assigned to a carrier and then let you know, hey, this is the final breakdown. We quoted you 1,000, it looks like it came in at 1,045. Are you good with that, yay or nay? As long as you sign off, then we proceed, it gets dispatched out, and the carrier will come pick up that vehicle, and generally you're not gonna pay anything else until it reaches the destination. Um, and that final price, as I just mentioned, it's always going to be fluctuating just a little bit on the estimation side, based on those first five or so factors that I highlighted, okay? So that is why it's impossible to guarantee that number right when you're getting an estimate, okay? But the company should be competent enough to give you a $100 to $150 window of what that's going to take. Now, if you want, like, if you just, do, just put your head in the sand and you ignore everything I'm saying and you beg someone for a guaranteed rate, well, yeah, a company, lots of companies out there we'll probably give it to you. But you'll find out later that it was not actually guaranteed, the dates were not guaranteed, and none of it was guaranteed. But they do that to suck you in, bait you in, to get you to book the order, and then once you've made some kind of, you know, once you've decided to go with them, generally people feel locked in and they just have to deal with it until they get it moved. So I think that pretty much sums it all up. I hope you guys have a better understanding as to the actual transport rates and how that all works. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Thanks for following us. Love all the support. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next one.